Hey guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. So I know I took a bit of an hiatus for a month, but trust me, it was definitely needed. But I'm so happy to be back with you guys. I missed you guys. And most importantly, I miss bringing attention to these cases that often get overlooked. And we have one today. Now, it's been a year since March 9th, 2022. Ella Goody disappeared after dropping off a passenger during her lift ride. The details surrounding her case is very suspicious and the family would love for her case to receive more attention so that they can bring Ella back home. This is her story. Black people are in a state of an emergency. We are in a state of emergency. Ella Goody was a 32-year-old from Lafayette, Louisiana. She grew up with her mom and her little brother. Growing up, she had to be the caretaker of the house because her mother was actually disabled. So she was known to be very loving, strong, and always reliable. Her best friend Felicia, who she met in high school, expressed that when she first met Ella, they became friends right away. They were like sisters. She wanted to always have her back because Ella had a rough upbringing. She didn't really have the typical kid life because she was forced to be an adult pr pretty early. But no matter what Ella went through personally, Felicia described that she always had a bright spirit about herself. Like, it didn't matter if she was going through tough times, good times, she always stayed the bright, bubbly person that she was. Ella was also a mom to two beautiful girls and moved to Scott, Louisiana. Now, during the beginning of the year in 2022, Ella expressed to Felicia that she was looking for a new job. Now, Felicia advised her that she should start working for Lyft, which is a rideshare service similar to Uber, which we all know. Now, Ella was kind of against it at first, you know, rightfully so, because she felt like she didn't want random strangers in her car, but she felt like, you know, this can be a perfect opportunity to just get back on her feet, make a little extra money, because around this time, like, she really needed, you know, just some more income to help her out. So after a couple months, she started to really get the hang of being a Lyft driver in her city. And eventually, she wanted to start working outside of her city and she didn't want to use the Lyft car service anymore. She wanted to have her own clients and the way she was going to get her own clients was by forming a relationship with them um, while using the Lyft ride service. So all right now during this time, she's actually gaining her own clientele. Like after she'll pick somebody up from Lyft, she'll give them, you know, her personal information and let them know, hey, if you ever need a ride, I got you, I'll help you. So she started to make like her own money and see people that, you know, she started to build a relationship with. So on March 8th, 2022, which was a Tuesday, Ella spoke with Felicia on the phone and shared that she met a few people and had been dropping them off to a few locations when they needed a ride. And Ella didn't seem worried or bothered about anything. She was also talking about, you know, some weekend plans with Felicia. So it was just another day for Ella. She was in good spirits. She's making her money. You know, she's feeling good about things. So on Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, Ella received a text from someone she knew that needed a ride to Houston, Texas. So she agreed to do the job that morning and she left her home and told her two daughters, you know, who are teenagers, by the way, to get ready for school and that she will see them by the time they get back home from school. Now, the details around what time she actually left the house is unknown, but she was getting ready to do her typical ride share. The drive from Scott, Louisiana to Houston, Texas is about three hours. So in total, three hours to get there and three hours to get back. So she was going to be gone for a while. But it looked like Ella left the house, you know, super early, early enough where she knew that she would be back home um, to her two girls. So she had every intention to come back home. 
So later that afternoon, Ella called her brother and they spoke about her driving to Texas to drop someone off and how she was on her way there already with the person. So she just needed to stop and get gas. But that was the last time her brother spoke with her again. Felicia did call Ella on the 9th, but she couldn't reach her at all. She eventually reached out to one of Ella's daughters and told her, hey, let me know when your mom gets back home so that she can give me a call. Now it's March 11th, 2022, and there's no sign of Ella. Like no one is able to get in contact with her. So her brother definitely filed a missing persons report. So when investigators were notified that Ella was missing, they first wanted to really locate her car to get an idea of where she was traveling to, to see if they could find her that way, you know, to pinpoint where she was last seen. Now, the good thing about this whole situation was the fact that investigators were able to capture Ella's black Audi on the highway driving towards Houston on March 9th during the morning hours. And and then 12 hours later, Ella's car was also captured on camera heading back to Louisiana on the highway. But the eerie part about all of this is the fact that the following day, her car was seen back in Texas heading to Dallas, which was very suspicious. And the windows of the car was tinted, so investigators really didn't know if it was Ella who was driving or someone else. Ella Goody is a mother of two girls, 13 and 14 years old. Her family say she told her daughter she would be back by the end of school last Wednesday after driving someone to Houston. I think she spoke to her daughter on that day, that morning, mm -hmm. and say, you know, make sure that she was going to school, go to school, and her mom was going to be back before she get back from school. That she was just going to do, go mm -hmm. bring this person to Houston, and she was going to come back. Goody had worked as a rideshare driver, but police say she was suspended from doing so at the time of her trip. But family members say she started offering driving services on her own. She, this guy asked her to bring it to Houston. You know, from her heart, she said, yeah, man, give me the money, pay me to bring it to Houston, I'm going to bring it to Houston. Uh, we do show that uh, on the 9th, her vehicle was uh, picked up on I-10 heading towards Texas um, in the early morning hours. And approximately 12 hours later, it was picked up back in Louisiana, coming back towards Lafayette area. Uh, the very next day after we pick, come back up in La into Louisiana, um, she is, her vehicle is tracked in north of Dallas. Family members hoping and praying for the best. Hopefully, no, we're not expecting any no. type of foul play. All we want is for her to come home safe. And whomever you are, if you're watching this, mm -hmm. all we ask is that you turn yourself in and let it go. So at this point, police really wanted to know who was the person that even reached out to Ella to bring them to Texas. They found out that it was a man named Brandon Francesco. He was someone that Ella gave rides um, for a few times, so she was very familiar with him. But because he was the last person to even see Ella, he definitely was the first person that they wanted to look into. So on March 16th, 2022, investigators shared with the public that they needed help locating Brandon Francisco immediately because he had a warrant out for his arrest. Now the crazy part about all of this is the fact that the day Ella gave him a ride to Texas, he failed to appear in court for a charge of arm robbery and obstruction of justice. So these charges were from an event back in 2018. Police was on a serious hunt for Brandon because that maybe can help them with a lead in finding Ella. Ella's family created a social media page centered to Ella's disappearance regarding search parties and updates and they also tried sharing her case with news outlets to bring more attention. Now, the last place that Ella's phone pinged from was in Iowa, Louisiana. So they did try to search around in that area and also tried to receive some help from police, but their involvement was very underwhelming. 
The family felt like there was a lack of urgency from the FBI with trying to find Ella. They felt like her case could have received more public attention and effort. And we all know when it comes to cases that are centered around black women, black men, black children that are missing, you know, it's gonna be a stall just to find out information. And not only just with black victims going missing, definitely if there's anything suspicious with like a wrongful death or police brutality, there's always just gonna be an issue. And that's just the sad reality and that's just, it's just a fact. I can understand why the family was just feeling a bit frustrated because sometimes with a lot of these cases that I cover, and you guys know, sometimes police would tell the families, hey, we're doing all that we can do. We're, we're doing this, we're doing that. And come to find out they're not doing much at all. Like the family ends up doing most of the work. They end up pouring out their own money into, into hiring private investigators and things like that. So I can't even ignore the fact that the Goody family was probably feeling a bit neglected when it came to Ellis case. Now, um, on March 25th, 2022, the U.S. Marshal received an anonymous tip and was able to locate Brandon Francisco and he was staying in St. Joseph, Missouri. So police, of course, took him in and he was denied bond. Now, two weeks later from Brandon being arrested on April 1st, 2022, police were able to locate Ella's Audi black car. And they actually found her car in the St. Joseph, Missouri area, the same area where they found and picked up Brandon, which I know we all feel in like that wasn't by accident. So the car was taken in for evidence and investigators came out with a statement that they were going to try and find evidence that could link them into finding Ella. Police did state that they questioned Brandon regarding Ella's disappearance, but information about that conversation weirdly never really made it to the public. Like, I couldn't even find much information about that at all. So it's really unknown if Brandon was allegedly involved or knew someone that was. Ella's case slowly started to grow cold over the months, unfortunately, because no new leads were found or any information regarding evidence from Ella's car. So on May 3rd, 2022, investigators announced that Ella's disappearance was being classified as a homicide case. Now, Ella's family didn't really agree with police handling the case as such because they feel like Ella is still very much alive. Friends and family of Ella Goody say this is a celebration that she is still here with them. They say all these lights they're holding up behind me represents Ella's spirit. They're praying and hoping that she is still alive and will come home safe. Ella Goody's cousins say while they are remembering her tonight, they are not remembering a person who is gone. I believe remembering is that, you know, so nobody forget about her. So that the community can know that we are still going to keep fighting until we find her. You know, we all keep in a faith because we know that she's still alive because we know she's coming back. Despite state police now investigating Goody's disappearance as a homicide, her cousins say they do not believe she's dead. It don't make me feel no type of way because I don't believe it's homicide because there's nobody. I mean, how could it be a homicide when there's nobody that's found? So, I mean, I don't believe it. We asked Goody's family why they feel she hasn't contacted them in over two months if she is, in fact, alive. I feel like she's in a, a dangerous situation. I think that somebody have her, you know, against her will. But I really feel in my heart that she will be set free. They're going to have to let her go. But we know she's not dead. We know she's alive. Goody's cousin says she's waiting for the day Ella comes home. She knows exactly what she'll say to Ella when she sees her again. You know, I'm going to tell her that, you know, we all miss you. We was missing you. We was all worried and, you know, stressing. And we just happy to have her back. 
the Goody family also didn't really feel connected with Ella's case because investigators haven't really kept them in the loop about things and they feel pretty much unsure about why Brandon has never even been charged. They don't know the details about the conversation he had with police when he was taken in and they feel like they haven't really been involved period when it comes to just her case in general everybody just moved on and it's, it's so stressful not knowing where is she what happened to her it's like waking up to the same nightmare every day for ella goody's family the 33 year old scott woman leaves behind two children her family and a community of supporters waiting for answers the year been going by with no answers no answers no answers and we've been praying and trying to keep the faith and praying somebody soften up their heart and come out and say they know something. It's been one year since her disappearance. Goody's family says they haven't heard any new information about their loved one, making them feel like Ella has been forgotten. It's one thing to lose somebody through uh, violence and, and, and through sickness, but just to wake up and your child is gone. Thursday evening, an event was held in Goody's honor to remember her and put her name back in the public's eye. Anything, no, any piece of information just to help us get some kind of way. We don't have nothing, anything. Now, in October 2022, NBC did feature Ella's story on Missing in America, a TV series, and that's been the only main media coverage regarding this case. As of right now, Louisiana State Police shared that there's no new information about Ella Goody's disappearance and that Brandon Francesco was sentenced to 30 years as part of a plea deal, and that was related to only his previous charges back in 2000. 2018. But when it comes to Ella's case, Brandon is only labeled as a person of interest and in that her case is now a homicide. Her family is still left with unanswered questions and they don't want us to forget about her. They still feel like Ella is alive and that they just want her home. She was last seen traveling to Houston, Texas on March 9th, 2022. She's 5'2 and weighs 120 pounds. She was last seen wearing a denim jacket and blue jeans. She has several tattoos on her body. So if you know anything or see anything, please contact Louisiana State Police. And I'll also leave their contact information down below. But let's go ahead and pray for the family because I feel like they're in a uncertain place. Like they feel in their spirit that Ella is still alive. And I'm pretty sure her daughters are feeling lost because they miss their mom. They want their mom. They don't know anything. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what happened to her. Her friends, her best friend Felicia, her brother, her mother, like... You could tell that Ella was an important factor in their family. And for her to just disappear without a trace and they don't know anything, that's disturbing. Father God, we all come together and we pray for the Goody family. I ask you, Lord, that you just bring everything that's in the dark to light. You know all things. I pray that this case just gets in the right hands all over again. I pray against this case just go just just going cold because you know all things. Someone knows something. She just didn't vanish. She had every intention on coming back home to her children. So Father God, we ask you that if there's anyone responsible, you bring it to the light. I pray for peace. I pray for comfort for the Goodies family, Lord. I pray for her daughters right now, Lord. They don't know where their mom is. They don't know what happened. I pray for peace for them, Lord. I pray for just an overwhelming just comfort and love. And I also pray for um, my subscribers, every subscriber that watches, Lord God. I pray that you, you give them peace. You protect them when they're traveling, when they're going to work. Father, Lord God, I also for every viewer that needs a lift, that does lift, or Uber driving, I just pray, Father, Lord God, that you protect them and keep them safe, Father, Lord God. I pray for everyone to have safe travels. 
I thank you, Lord God, for this platform, Lord. I pray that every case that we talk about, every case that we try to bring awareness to, you you bring more attention to it. Whether the, it's it just falls in the right person's hand. Every view matters, Father, Lord God. So I just pray that all of these cases just get the attention that they need. Lord, because you know all things. You know that most of these families, they're hurting, they're struggling, they're going through it right now. While we go on with our life, they're missing a loved one. Their whole world is upside down and they're stuck in a place that they can't get out of or can't move forward in their life because they have no idea what to do. They have no idea where their loved one is. If they're alive, if they're not, they don't know anything but just stay hopeful and pray that good comes out of it. And there's a lot of families that's been dealing with these heavy cases for years. Not just a year, not just a couple months, but for years still left with unanswered questions. So I just ask you, Lord, for just answers and peace and comfort. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But also, I wanted to add before we close off this video, um, don't forget to send me some more case recommendations of missing cases, of, you know, police brutality or domestic violence to bring more awareness to. I do check um, my emails for just case recommendations. I do have the case recommendation link down in the description box. It's a job form that you can fill out. Definitely add some information because it helps me out a lot when it's time to do research. So don't forget, I do look at the case recommendations. So send those. We're also going to be coming back with more consistent videos, guys. I'm definitely sorry about that. I've been going through a whole life transition with a new baby and just different things going on personally. So, but now we're back on track. We're coming back with some more content so thank you so much for the support on this channel i just want to add that and i'm always looking at the case recommendations and also on my instagram i do see them they're very helpful the, the um this case is one of the cases that was sent to me to talk about so i look at the case recommendations so um thank you again guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video Black people are in a state of an emergency. We are in a state of emergency. Black folks in America and those who support us need to understand